This next exercise um, is the uh, box and sphere. I'm going to again uh, begin with the cube and just as in the previous demonstration I'm uh, going to work the basic shape finding the dominant uh, vertical line, the, the closest edge, and then uh, finding the angles of the horizontal lines that will help define the perspective of the cube and the various planes of the cube. Um, I'm going to draw the entire uh, object, even though you can't see the back uh, of the top plane because of the sphere, it's important to put that in because it's still technically there and by establishing the entire top of the box um, that will allow me to then more accurately place the sphere on top. I'll be able to pinpoint its um, point of contact and then from there um, build the, uh, the composition. Again, I'm making sure that the angles are accurate and that opposite lines are parallel. Now that the top of the box is roughed in, I can now find where the sphere makes its point of contact. So, um, Now I can say right at this point is where the sphere will begin and because it roughly is the same size as the cube I can use the object as the basis for establishing the proper scale um, of the sphere. I can set the outside um, point of the sphere in relation to the cube below. I can establish the height of the sphere and once I have all four sides um, set as the uh, perimeter I now can then draw the contour of the sphere and set the uh, circular shape within the composition. By working the entire general composition in this manner, uh, before committing to any specifics, I keep everything in proper relationship. Um, as before, I'm going to darken the background to draw the objects forward in space. With the background established and some residual uh, material on my fingers. I'm going to now uh, begin drawing, dropping in the uh, the grayscale values that I see, the dominant shadows in the objects, and I'm going to kind of work them together so the drawing builds up with um, a nice harmonious relationship between the two objects. want to um, establish that the darkest value in the sphere comes at the um, center axis of the object, that um, the darkest value isn't at the furthest edge, but rather is in um, the middle of the object. And I want the uh, pastel to wrap around the object so that its form can be drawn out so it feels like it's coming forward off of the paper. Um, as the shadow in the sphere then 
moves to the edge of the object as it moves away from the light source. It actually will soften. Uh, this principle is referred to as reflective highlight. Because it's a round object and doesn't have hard edges, um, light actually wraps around the form and the form actually reflects the light around it. So you actually have a bit of a softer value as you get to the outside edges of the form. I want to indicate the cast shadow that the sphere is um, casting on the top plane of the cube. This sets the object on top and establishes the relationship between the two forms. As before, I want to now begin to commit to putting down um, the pastel material to begin developing the values and the proper contrast so the objects begin to feel solid and three-dimensional. With the eraser, I'm now putting light back into the drawing again, establishing the uh, surface, the tabletop where the objects are uh, resting. Now making some uh, specific decisions as to the values that I want that now you know bring forth and, and keep the harmony uh, that exists within each object and from one object to the other so the composition comes together as a whole. adding some of the reflective details in the sphere, the reflected highlight that um, contributes to the three-dimensional illusion of the object.
Now I'm just adding some specific highlights to the sphere that are consistent with the light source that uh, reinforces the object's surface. I'm also mindful that um, each highlight is distinct in its own size and shape and intensity. Um, I just don't want to blindly apply highlights and have them all be the same that um, uh, kills the illusion of uh, the three-dimensionality of the object. So it's important to make sure that everything is specific to, uh, to what is actually seen in the still life. Now it's just a matter of cleaning up edges and sharpening up the image to get to a um, finished study.